Hello students, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to talk about the most important topic of this chapter that is the human circulatory system. Now you know for a fact that the human circulatory system mainly consists of the blood vessels which we have already discussed and now we will be talking about the human heart. Before that, remember the fact that who discovered the circulatory system? It was William Harvey who discovered the circulatory system. Coming back to the human circulatory system, the organ which is of most importance is the human heart. When you see the introductory parts of the human heart, the location you can see it is in the mediastinum. Now I have told you what do you mean by mediastinum. In breathing and exchange of gases, I clearly told you the space which is present between two lungs, this is referred to as mediastinum. So heart is located in the mediastinum. So is it correct? Many people say that the heart is present on the left side of the body. Incorrect. The heart is present in the middle of the body, but we will see what are the modifications. You can see that when you see the shape, heart is a hollow fibromuscular organ. Why muscular? Because you know for a fact that here cardiac muscles are there. Along with that, it is conical or pyramidal shaped structure which forms the upper broad part which is called as the base and the lower narrow part which is called as the apex. As you can see, the heart is present here. This part which is present, this is referred to as the base and the part which is the corner part, this is referred to as the apex. Because of the presence of the apex, we could see formation of a depression on this lung. So that was referred to as the cardiac notch. Moving on, you can see that the apex of the heart, as you can see this is the apex of the heart, it is not present straight in the middle, it is tilted towards the left. So you can say heart is situated in the middle but the apex of the heart is tilted towards the left. So that is about their location and shape. Moving on, you can see that the apex is slightly tilted towards the left. When you come to the size, it is 12 centimeters in length and 9 centimeters in width. And when you see the weight, in males, it is around 280 to 340 grams. On an average, 300 grams, you can say. Whereas in females, it is around 230 to 280 grams. On an average, you can say it is around 250 grams. That means heart in females is smaller when compared to males. So this is about their introductory part. Now students, we will be seeing their histology or you can say histology of the heart wall. When you take the heart and enlarge the structure here and see, it is made up of different layers. Now we will talk about them one by one. You know that heart is covered by a layer which is called as pericardium. Now in that pericardium there are different regions. We will talk about them one by one. The outermost region which you can see this is referred to as fibrous pericardium. Obviously fibrous pericardium is made up of connective tissue, thick structure which is protecting the heart. Internally, you can see this double membrane structure. This is called a serous pericardium. Now, the serous pericardium has two regions. As you can see here, this region, it is referred to as parietal pericardium. And this inner wall, this is referred to as visceral pericardium. Now, between the parietal and visceral pericardium, you can see this layer. This layer consists of a fluid. This is called as pericardial fluid, which is present in the pericardial space. So, pericardial fluid is present in the pericardial space. So, this together, it is referred, these two layers, it is referred to as the pericardium. You can also remember one more thing, visceral pericardium is also referred to as epicardium. So I will tell you guys one more time, 
as you can see the outermost region is fibrous pericardium inner region is serous pericardium serous pericardium is made up of two layers outer parietal pericardium inner visceral pericardium also called as epicardium in between them the pericardial space is there inside the pericardial space you can see pericardial fluid now students together this is the outermost region what is the function of this pericardial fluid you know that heart is continuously pumping from the time you are born till the time you die and around it there are different organs to prevent friction between the heart and the other organs this pericardial fluid is there also it provides for shock absorption along with the fat which is present around the heart now moving on after epicardium you can see this region so this region which is a muscular region this is referred to as myocardium so this is called as myocardium first region was pericardium second region is called as myocardium and this myocardium as you guys know is made up of what muscles it is made up of cardiac muscles thick layer of cardiac muscles and the last region which is facing the lumen of the heart or the empty spaces of the heart where the blood will flow this is made up of a layer of squamous epithelial cells so you can see this is the squamous epithelial layer normally we called it as endothelium in blood vessels but here we will call this as endocardium and as i told you it is made up of squamous cells so this is the histology of heart specifically if they ask you about the heart wall heart wall consists of epicardium myocardium and endocardium along with all the other regions you can say pericardium is the outermost layer so this is the histology of the heart wall so now let us see the structure of heart primarily we will see the external anatomy of heart then we will get into the details of the internal anatomy when you look at the heart externally you can see a lot of blood vessels i will not confuse you by naming them all here you can clearly see that there are these structures which are present here as you can see now these structures are referred to as auricles so when you look at the heart exteriorly you call these chambers as auricles because they look like external ear pinna of a dog so they look like external ear pinna of dog that is why when you are referring to this chamber externally you call them as auricles you can also see the ventricles which are here but there is no demarcation between the ventricles you know that there are two atria and two ventricles but externally you can't say ventricles are there the main thing what heart does as you all know is it pumps blood to different organs of the body but you have to remember heart itself is a tissue it is also a muscle so it also needs nutrients oxygen it also liberates carbon dioxide so some sort of circulatory system should be there to supply all this to the heart so that is referred to as the coronary circulation so you can see that these are called as the coronary arteries and this is referred to as coronary veins so coronary arteries supply oxygenated blood to the heart coronary veins collect the deoxygenated blood from the heart now from where the oxygenated blood is coming from the heart itself to where the deoxygenated blood will go to the heart itself now remember coronary vein is collecting what it is collecting the deoxygenated blood hold on to this point it will be helpful also you can see that this is the base of the heart and this pointed structure this is referred to as the apex of the heart so moving on now we will see the internal anatomy of heart so clearly what we will take here the transfer section will be taking and will be discussing the regions which are there first of all remember what chambers did we name when we were talking about them externally auricles and ventricle here when we are talking about them internally we refer to this as the atria we can call this as the atria atria means what entry hall a chamber now 
how many atria will be there two atria will be there this will be referred to as the right atria this will be referred to as the left atria so two atrias are there as you can see now always remember atria is a receiving chamber so obviously it will be receiving blood from where that we will discuss now first let us talk about the right atria so right atria as you can see has this opening coming from here and this opening which is coming from the lower side what is it bringing in here you can say that deoxygenated blood will come this is referred to as superior vena cava now superior vena cava will bring a deoxygenated blood from the upper regions of the body this is the opening of inferior vena cava so this inferior vena cava will bring deoxygenated blood from the lower regions of the body so from everywhere deoxygenated blood has now come into the heart here remember i told you about coronary veins so those coronary veins also pour their blood into this chamber so there will be a small opening here this opening will be referred to as coronary sinus so superior vena cava bringing in deoxygenated blood from the upper regions of the body pouring it in the right atria inferior vena cava bringing in deoxygenated blood and pouring it into the right atria coronary sinus is the opening of all the coronary veins collectively into the atria now students let us move on to this atrium that is the left atrium here you can see two openings clearly so these are referred to as pulmonary veins what are veins something which is bringing in blood coincidentally most of the veins carry deoxygenated blood but exception is this pulmonary veins which are bringing in what type of blood oxygenated blood how many pulmonary veins many students will say two no actually there are two pairs of pulmonary veins totally as you can see these are also pulmonary veins so totally how many pulmonary veins will be there four pulmonary veins will be there so deoxygenated blood is in the right atria oxygenated blood is in the left atria here we'll talk about few more things with regard to atria first of all when you take the cross section of the atrial wall like this you can see the small projections muscles this is referred to as musculi tectinati or tectinate muscles this is for competitive exams you don't have to remember them for your boards also remember that in your embryonic stages i'm drawing a block diagram of your heart so you know for a fact that heart is divided into four chambers even when you are a baby there were four chambers this was the right atria this was the left atria this was the right ventricle this was the left ventricle when is this this is at embryonic stages between the right atria and the left atria there was this hole this hole was referred to as foramen oval after birth will this hole stay no this hole will convert into a depression present on the interatrial septum now what do you mean by interatrial septum a muscular wall which separates these two atria is called as interatrial septum this septum is referred to as interventricular septum so you can see in adults between right atria and the left atria there has been this depression which has been formed this depression it is called as fossa ovalis this is called as fossa ovalis this is a very important point this you can say after birth now you would have to question why is this happening this is because let us imagine the deoxygenated blood is coming into the heart it will come into the ventricle from the atria it will go to lungs in us but in babies lungs are not functional the exchange of gases would occur at the placenta so here heart should not pump the blood to the lungs 
so obviously from this atria it will jump into the right atria so blood will be coming from the right atria into the left atria what happens after that we will see that slowly moving on now we'll talk about the right side of the heart right atria had deoxygenated blood from the body now whenever this atria will contract whenever this atria will contract remember what is happening to the volume of the atria the volume of the atria will decrease whenever volume decreases what happens to pressure pressure increases because volume and pressure are inversely proportional so in this case as the atria contracts volume decreases pressure increases now the blood will try to go back into these tubes but it will not do that because there are few valves which are present for example in the coronary sinus the valve of the coronary sinus it is called as eustachian valve eustachian valve is present in coronary sinus in inferior vena cava we can see presence of thebaisian valve Whereas in superior vena cava there is no valve, but the pre-caval vein which is coming here that will have haversian valve. So that will have haversian valve. So you can say that the backflow of the blood is prevented from the atria. So there is only one way that is it will go into the ventricles. from the right atria the blood has now come into the right ventricle so this is your right ventricle so students now you know that the right atria has a deoxygenated blood and the left atria has oxygenated blood what will happen when the atria contracts you know for a fact that whenever something contracts what is happening to their volume volume is decreasing and whenever volume decreases what happens to pressure pressure increases because you know for a fact that volume and pressure are inversely proportional now as the pressure of blood has increased in the atria it will try to go away it will try to go through any hole which is there so it will try to go back into superior vena cava it will try to go back into inferior vena cava it will try to go back into the coronary sinus but will they go back no because there are some things which are called as valves or you can say doors which allow the movement of blood in only one direction not in reverse direction so here you can say that the inferior vena cava has this valve which is called as eustachian valve so the valve of inferior vena cava is eustachian valve the valve of coronary sinus is called as thebaisian valve whereas superior vena cava does not have any valves but the pre caval vein which is bringing the blood into superior vena cava that will have something called as haversian valve so this haversian valve is present in the pre caval vein now you know that when the atria contracts blood will not go back into the places where it came from it will go into the next region those are called as the ventricles in this case it is called as the right ventricle so deoxygenated blood has now come into the right ventricle when you look at the ventricles let us talk about the ventricles here the walls of the ventricles have these foldings these foldings are depressions projections of the cardiac muscle they are called as columnae carnae or also called as trabeculae carnae on this columnae carnae you can see small muscles projections these are referred to as papillary muscles i will tell you their function in some time from a right ventricle whenever the blood contracts what blood is it deoxygenated blood whenever the right ventricle will contract it has two ways to go either it can go into this tube like structure i am not telling you the name yet or it can go back into the atria but it will not go back into the atria because here you can see presence of a valve which is called as tricuspid valve 
Now, what do you mean by tricuspid valve? Here in this case, the tricuspid valve will have three cusps. I'll show you here. It will have three flap-like structures like this. So this is referred to as tricuspid valve. So which is present between the right atria and the right ventricle. So whenever ventricle contracts, the tricuspid valve will shut close. Only one way is there, it can go. Deoxygenated blood, remember where it should go? It should go to lungs for oxygenation. What is carrying them? This structure which is called as pulmonary trunk. Or you can say pulmonary artery. This pulmonary trunk will divide into right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery. Or you can say this is the right pulmonary artery and this is the left pulmonary artery. It will take it to the respective lungs for oxygenation. After the oxygenation is done, the oxygenated blood will come back through the pulmonary veins into the left atria. Now whenever this left atria will contract, automatically the blood will come into the left ventricle. From here, it will be supplied to the body. Now, why is it not going back here too? Because between the left atria and left ventricle, you can see presence of a structure which is called as bicuspid valve. This is called as bicuspid valve, also referred to as the mitral valve. Why is it called as bicuspid? Because it will have two cusps like this, flap-like structures. Now. Is there a possibility that the ventricles will contract with such a force, the AV valves, these are referred to as the AV valves, the tri and bicuspid valves, can collapse back into the atria? Yes, it is possible. But that is prevented by these tendon-like structures present between papillary muscles and the valves. So these tendon-like structures are referred to as chordae tendine. This is called as chordae tendine. So that is how the backflow of blood is prevented between the ventricles and the atria. Here you can see that the oxygenated blood, whenever this contracts, it will go into this structure. This is referred to as the aorta. From aorta, you can see all the different regions are getting oxygenated blood. These three structures will give the blood to the upper regions of the body. The aorta will loop around. This is called as the ascending aorta, aortic arch, and then it will come down like this, descending aorta, which will give the oxygenated blood to the different regions of the body. Is there a possibility whenever ventricles relax, the blood can come back? Yes, because of gravity. So when the ventricles are relaxing, what is happening to volume? Increasing, pressure decreasing. So blood will is a liquid, right? Blood is basically a liquid. It will try to come back into the ventricles. But that is also prevented by these valves which are present in the pulmonary artery and the aorta as well. So these valves which are present, these are referred to as the semilunar valves. This is called as semilunar valves which are present in both pulmonary artery as well as aorta. Specifically, the semilunar valve of the pulmonary artery, it is called as pulmonary valve, whereas the semilunar valve which is present in the aorta, it is called as aortic valve. Why is it called as semilunar valve? Because it looks like the half moon shaped structure. We will discuss about them in some time. Now go back and see this thing which I told you. The blood is coming into the left atria. If not, in embryo, if this did not happen, the deoxygenated blood will come here. It will go to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. To prevent that blood is jumping from right atria to left ventricle. But some more amount of blood can be left in the atria, will come into ventricle, will come into pulmonary artery. But in case of embryo, between pulmonary artery and aorta, there will be this duct which is connecting it. So this is referred to as the ductus arteriosus. So remember this point, in case of embryo, it is called as ductus arteriosus. But this ductus arteriosus will form after birth, it will close and will be remaining as in the form of just a ligament. It would be closed and non-functional. That is called as ligamentum arteriosum. 
so it is called as ligamentum arteriosum so this is also some things which you can remember about the structure of heart so students now we will talk about few things which we have already discussed but now we will talk it in a detailed way first thing is the valves of the heart the main type of valves which we had discussed are the semilunar valves as you can see this is called as semilunar valves because obviously they look like what half moon crescent shaped structures so this is present in both pulmonary artery and the aorta which prevents the backflow of blood from them into the ventricles next you can see this is what valve tricuspid valve this is what valve bicuspid valve or the mitral valve so tricuspid valve will be present between right atria and right ventricle bicuspid or the mitral valve will be present between left atria and the left ventricle along with that the superior vena cava was getting blood from the precaval vein it had haversian valve the inferior vena cava will have what valve eustachian valve the coronary sinus will have thebesian valve or the coronary valve these are the things which we have to know about the valves along with them you can see these are the columnae carnae these are the papillary muscles these are the chordae tendine which are present here between the valves and the papillary muscles what do they prevent they prevent the collapse of the valves into the atria because they are holding on to them and you know that tendons are made up of collagen and they are inelastic so these are few things which are very important moving on now we will see the conducting system of heart this is one of the most important points we always say heart contracts on its own now how does it do that because it has a few modified muscles which are excitable they can generate an action potential that means they can generate a depolarization in the membrane first let us talk about group of muscles which are modified which are present near the opening of the superior vena cava so this group of muscles modified muscles it is called as sinoatrial node famously called as the sa node this sa node is the main structure which is producing the depolarization or the action potential initiates the contraction of heart first the atria will contract because of the sa node so that is the reason why it is called as the pace maker of the heart the sa node how many times does it produce an action potential it can produce 72 times per minute that is the reason why our heart also beats for about 72 times per minute on average so from here you can see the tissues of the atria have contracted near the interventricular septum near the interventricular septum you can see presence of another group of modified muscle cells this is called as atrio ventricular node also referred to as the av node so this av node collects the depolarization of the action potentials from sa node amplifies it again sends it to the ventricular valves through what through the interventricular septum that is the reason why this is called as the pace setter of the heart this is called a space setter of the heart from av node you can see that here few more muscle fibers are entering into the interventricular septum so this is referred to as bundle of his it is called as bundle of his so from here the conduction would occur into this fibers or you can say it has split into two fibers here so these fibers are referred to as purkinje's fibers and i'll tell you one more time sa node is causing the contraction of the atria av node bundle of his and purkinje's fiber together are contracting the ventricle so atria contracts first then the ventricle will contract we will know the details later on so this is how the conducting mechanism is working i'll tell you one more time first what is happening from the sa node the depolarization reach the av node from av node it will reach bundle of his 
after that it will reach purkinje's fibers so this is how the depolarization is moving now students what will happen if i remove this sa node or for some reason sa node has failed at that point av node will take its role and av node will start producing depolarization but at a slower rate for example if it is producing 72 times per minute it will do around 55 to 60 times per minute even if av node fails that time the bundle of his and purkinje's fibers will take their place and start contracting but again at a slower pace around 30 to 35 times per minute so that is the reason why in case of failure of the natural pacemaker what do we do we give the artificial pacemaker so basically it is a solid lithium cell or a battery you can tell this was introduced by chardak in the year 1960 so basically what this lithium ion battery does or the lithium ion cell does is that the sa node if it has failed it will start giving depolarization through this so basically this will be a battery so there will be two different nodes one will be kept near the superior vena cava another one will be kept near the ventricles in this case this will be producing those depolarization or small electric current will be given by this lithium cell so that is why it is called as artificial pacemaker now what has happened the heartbeat will be restored and it will be maintained so students with that said today's topic of a human heart is complete i hope you have remembered all the topics very clearly So with that said I'll meet you guys in the next video with few more topics